Hey everyone, welcome back to Linux Weekly, Daily Wednesdays, where we sit back, relax, take that midweek break, talk about some of the fun things we got going on in the world of Linux, open source, anything else that kind of catches our eye. Hello, hello. I'm Ben, that's Jill, <laughs> and everyone watching this live on Twitch, but not typing in Discord. Well, occasionally typing in Discord this afternoon, because yeah. right before the show, <laughs> as is tradition, if yep. a service we kind of lean into, rely on a little bit, goes down it will. And uh, Discord is having some API issues, but you can still type in Twitch or in Discord. If you're in Discord, you seem to be good for the most part. Can you can you just guess the first comment on the YouTube videos? Like, have you heard about Matrix? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, if you set up your server right on Matrix, you usually don't have outages. <laughs> so <laughs> I know, but then you have to use Matrix. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> making Aww. friends, making friends. So last night we had a practice session with the track mania. I am having a wonderful mm -hmm. time with that. Everybody's showing up and um, that's kind of my goal. I'm trying to reignite former crippling track mania addictions and start brand new ones. People are having a good time with yeah. it. We got some laps in, we mm -hmm. voted on tracks. So Friday we're going to put all of our skill, the test servers up 24 seven, to get your times in and we'll be doing a points match. I found where I can change the points because previously our point was like some random number, like 900 and something. I've changed the points to 1337 because I'm a nerd. So now ah, in order nice to get the points, you got to get 1337 yeah. to be the winner of each track. And I think we have like 19 oh. tracks. So Friday, that's going to go down. I invite everybody to come watch if you want to participate. All the information is in Discord. If Discord is still a thing come Friday and hasn't burnt into a smoldering <laughs> crater wherever it may be, but all the information you need for track mania and to get into our little Linux server is available there. Also I'm tuning this thing. I'm playing around when I say mm -hmm. mic tuning because I hadn't said mic tuning yet. So I just said it. Um, redoing EQ curves, um, gating downward expansion, all the other fun stuff, just trying to get it dialed in to where I want it. And this is um this is an older mic, but they still make them. This is an SE twenty two hundred. It's a studio mic. I wouldn't recommend anyone. I'm sure some YouTuber has done a video on one and like this thing sounds super flat and it picks up everything in the room, as they will. Uh, would not mm -hmm. recommend it um uh, if you're not doing any type of processing on it because they're not meant for that. But yeah, just playing around with that because I want to take apart my RE twenty seven N D just to uh, take a look at the voice engine. I'm not 100% on my uh, abilities to get everything back together yet. So I'm kind of weighing out, like, do I just want to send this thing back to Electro Voice because it's like 260 bucks for them to do a, just refit on everything. But that that's almost half the price of the microphone. So I, I don't mm. know. There's nothing wrong with it. It's nothing you would even hear at home. It just, the, I wear out voice engines on dynamic microphones. This is a problem I've encountered yeah. personally. So, uh, yeah, mm -hmm. that, that's my story. Uh, track addictions <laughs> have been enabled and I'll see everyone Friday. How about you, Jill? You showed up uh, oh, last night. Yeah, I had so much fun, uh, you know, playing all these uh, practice and practice maps and testing and having fun playing with you and Wimpy and all our patrons. It was really awesome. <laughs> I will say patrons and um, Twitch, Twitch subscribers. Can jump in. Yeah, Twitch subs. Yeah, we had quite a few. Yeah. <laughs> now, even though, like, when you go into the Trackmania server browser, it, it says, hey, look, we're a bunch of filthy casuals. That's the name of our series. And we're trying to learn how to do this if you want, you know, because I'm just doing this for patrons and our Twitch subs. I'm not saying, hey, come give me a dollar or whatever it is for a Twitch sub. Um, previously, this was the first week somebody didn't pop into Twitch chat. We're like, I want password. Give me password. No, <laughs> we're trying to also, if you're like really, really good, not, not the place for you. You don't want to do, um, I mean, if you're the type of person that wants to do a bunch of victory <laughs> laps around preschoolers at a race publicly, you're probably not going to have a good time because we're a bunch of preschoolers trying to make our way around the track. <laughs> we're a bunch of noobs. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> or if you're in my case, you don't, I've casual casual video gaming jill casual where has player. it gone yeah it's like hey man <laughs> uh, i like playing around every now and then when i get a chance and it's fun yeah. it's neat but i don't have 16 hours a day to dedicate to a game anymore no and that's 
Yeah, that's that's my problem too. There's there's a thing called work. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. So this isn't a gaming show. We're not going to worry about it. I'm just kidding. Steam Deck's launching February 25th. I had to throw this in. Woo-hoo. I saw a couple of people like Arthur and, and then I saw this all over Twitter this morning. And if you don't know about the Steam Deck, if even if you don't care about gaming, it is a portable AMD powered with hot Navi GPU, well, APU, however, whatever they want to call it. But the big news is it's going to be released on the February of the 25th launch day. Users who have mm-hmm. already reserved Steam Decks will receive invitations. You're going to get an email saying, hey, you got 72 hours to order your deck. Then that invitation is going to go to somebody else. And after that, yeah. after they're done with that, the batches will start being rolled out, you know, weekly. Like, hey, here's your chance to get it. Here's your chance to get it. Here's your chance to get it. And I love this uh, because even if you're not into gaming, just the technology sector, technology enthusiasts like myself, we need a win after two years. Because yeah. We haven't been able to buy any. Not, not <laughs> exactly. Like, no GPUs. Now CPUs. Pick up anything. Yeah. Like maybe yeah. you could pick up a CPU. Maybe you could get a GPU. Like maybe if you had to and you were forced to, but you, no one wanted to pay any of these prices. And we were talking about this in the pre show. Mm-hmm. Like NVIDIA released their uh, 3050. And I was trying to come up with a situation like, why would I ever buy one of those? I'm like, maybe if my 2060 exploded and I had to have something in the box the next day. But yeah, it's Steam Deck, and they're not terribly expensive. I mean, they're pricey, but nowhere near what like the Aya Neo and the other portable yeah. gaming. I mean, three ninety nine for the base model, six forty nine for the big chunky one. I'm down with it. I'm not going to order one until after the initial thing is over because I'm not going to spend a lot of time gaming on it. I'm going to be the person that tears it apart. <laughs> and sees all the other stuff I can do with it. I got a gaming machine, a little portable tinker box. Absolutely. Aw. Well, I'm supposed to be one of the first first people to get one. So I, I got got my reservation in the first few hours. So that, <laughs> that was wonderful. So I can't wait to get my hands um, uh, on a, a Steam Deck. And another thing I want to use it for is actually to play around with it, uh, to do some uh, podcasting and broadcasting on it. And uh, it's, it, it's got the power to do it, so I should be able to just hook up my uh, USB uh, uh, mic, you know, and mic to it. So why not? <laughs> Maybe. I don't know if I'm that bad. I mean, that's something I'm going to try. And that is that is perfectly sane. We were talking on um, Linux Gamecast Weekly last Saturday going through because they're starting to do initial batches of uh, deck certified games and somebody at Valve had plugged in a copy of Arizona Sunshine and that that one jumped out to me because that's a VR only game which means somebody was trying to mm. can we get this to play some VR some? no no it was not a good time it wasn't a good time which <laughs> but still so many ideas so many things to play yeah. with like, and I'm very excited about it and yeah just thought we would bring that up but this Woo-hoo. is unintentionally <laughs> turned into the portable Linux hardware show this week, Joe. Uh, absolutely. So this is so awesome. So Martin Winpress has been very hard at work for several months getting Ubuntu Mate 21.10 working on the GPD Pocket 3 computer. And it's a wonderful, cute little mini 8-inch laptop that you can game on. And he's actually gotten Mate to work on uh, several of the GPD pockets. And this is the third revision. And he got it working really beautifully. And you can now download the ISO from the Ubuntu Mate official website, which is awesome. But he had to do a lot of tweaks to Ubuntu Mate 21.10 to uh, get it to work with a lot of the specific functions for the GPD Pocket 3 including enabling frame buffer support and automatic screen rotation, which in- also includes rotation of the touchscreen and stylus via a new accelerator, accelerometer support. And it enables audio support via the HD audio legacy driver. 
and he enabled scroll wheel emulation while holding down the middle trackpad button. And actually, one of my favorite features, if I ever um, get to buy one, I do have them on my wish list on eBay, <laughs> is um, he got Ubuntu Mate 21.10 enabling fractionally, fractional scaling by default and doubling the size of the console uh, TTY font resolution. So that's really good for me with vision problems. And it's kind of one of the reasons why I haven't bought this little computer because the screen is a little tiny for me with uh, being half blind. <laughs> so <laughs> How big is the screen on this critter anyway? Um... Yeah, it is... Uh... Oh, I had that in the notes. <laughs> What happened? Did. What happened? <laughs> yes. <laughs> what happened? What happened? I don't know. Eight inch. Eight inch. Okay. Eight I inch. knew I was going to say seven and a half, <laughs> but it's eight inch. <laughs> that is a bit small. But yeah, as it's... small as I can go on the screen is about 10 inches. And I'm like, that. And then yeah. if I have to do anything with touch, it becomes very comical with my hands. Rawr. Yeah. Trying to smash into it. No. Not everything's perfect on it. Uh, Martin points out that there's no support for the fingerprint reader that's built into this. So you're going to have to use your toes mm -hmm. and yeah. um, suspend. Suspend does work, though, which is oh, nice. Okay, yeah. Something like that. You don't want constantly cut on and cut off and that bit. But tear-free rendering by default. Nice touch. Because that's not the first thing you want to see. See, that's also thrown back to mm -hmm. the Steam Deck where the software part of it's going to be interesting because it's going to be doing everything on Wayland. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> the GDPs. Well, this is just I've amazing liked, work. Yeah. Yeah. They've always been they're a really little beautiful. too pricey, though. But I understand yeah. why they're pricey and for the market they are, because, you know, they're small batch boutique things. I can exactly look at and lust after, but I'm like, I can't spend that kind of money on it because I'm play with it for 10 minutes and put it aside. Maybe, <laughs> yeah. maybe if I can develop a collection of things, I could justify it, but I don't collect things. I give them away. Um, <laughs> oh, I, I went up for my collection. Actually, I have the GPD, um, the first version, in, in my wish wish list. And I've almost bought one. I found one at a reasonable price. It was like $250. And I'm like, mm. I almost got it. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I could just, they're worth way more than $200. bucks. i will first to say that about yeah. 200 bucks. if somebody's like, 200 bucks, I'm like, yeah, fine, I'll buy one. Same way with the yeah. Steam Deck. It was like, 200 bucks. Sure, but then it turned around and like I, I don't know. That's not the oh. only super small thing we got this week. We got a little oh. tiny Manjaro arch. Is that an arch? Is the Manjaros the arches? Yeah. So there is a new AMD Ryzen 7 3750H processor with Vega 10 graphics, Linux based mini PC <laughs> you can pre-order right now. And it has Manjaro Linux pre-installed. Woohoo! So you can get your, by the way, I run Arch on. <laughs> I love Arch. I run it too. <laughs> and it's actually the Desk Mini UM700 is a very powerful mini PC and starts at, an at a great introductory sell price at $400.69. Uh, four hundred and sixty nine dollars for eight gigs of RAM and two hundred and fifty six gig gigabyte M dot two SSD. And there's another model um that you can get for five thirty nine for sixteen gigabytes of RAM and a five hundred and twelve gigabyte M dot two SSD. And after the sale the prices will start going up to about uh five ninety nine for for the uh lower level one. But it, it seems that Ven has found one in another location, a little cheaper. Well, it's okay. First thing, I, I want to warn everyone that this comes with Manjaro Gaming Edition. So I feel like a lot of a lot of other people out there are like, there's a gaming edition of Manjaro? Of course there is. Why not? That's awesome. Yeah. So, yeah, I was looking at that. I'm like, that case looks awfully familiar. Let's talk about some of the things. It's got three 4K video holes, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and allegedly a silent fan if you've ever played with a Nook system. Sometimes it's the case, sometimes it's not. It just depends on where you have it located. Now, 2.5 gigabit ether noodle on the back of that critter, which is mm -hmm. good to see. And nice. I love the specs. I love the price. That price is very reasonable. And like most of you, I like the idea of the Nook, but I've just always wanted an AMD one. There's a reason I have a wall of AMD processors that I bought over the 20 years because I just don't do <laughs> Intel on the desktop because I'm that guy, rar. Um, 
<laughs> that case just looked really familiar. I mean, I was looking at it and I'm like, hmm, and those specs look really familiar. And I'm like, okay, 469, you know what? That's a really good deal for eight gigs of RAM. Awesome. Right up until you go over to Amazon and you just get this minus the um, Manjaro Gaming Edition mm-hmm. for 484, but it comes with 16 gigs of RAM and a 256 gig uh, SSD. Yeah. Nice. So I'll put those links so, in the show notes. Yeah. Uh, see, here's the thing. The only reason I bring that up, if um, you want to order it from Men's Forum, that's great. They don't offer any type of like Linux support or anything. Let's be honest. Let's be honest. If it came with a drive of Linux, even with a System 76 or something like that, the first thing I'm going to do is take the drive out and wipe it and reinstall Linux. Just Yeah. <laughs> I know. I do that with all my machines, whether they're pre-installed Linux or not. <laughs> just to put what I want on there or or just a, you know, change. <laughs> So, you know, yeah, the 8 gig version, I mean, if you want Manjaro Gaming Edition pre-installed, this is probably the way. Or there's also the Amazon option. A little more DIY, but you get more RAM and probably a better deal. But links for all that in the show notes. Now, mm-hmm. continuing on with... Yeah, the framework. Portability. I want one of these. Talk yeah. about, okay, this is oh. something I legitimately yes. lust after. I don't like laptops, <laughs> but man, this is so cool. Yeah. So Framework has published their open source embedded controller firmware for the Framework modular laptop, which is available to download now on their GitHub page. This is awesome. And what's interesting is actually the firmware is based on Google's Chromium EC project, which is the embedded controller firmware used in Chromebooks. So that that's very interesting, actually, and kind of makes sense. And like we have mentioned before here on LWW, Fedora 35 works out of the box on the Framework laptop and just beautifully. But what's really nice is Framework has been very impressed with the Linux community's contributions, their hacking, and and all their wonderful experimentation. And so there are actually now easy to follow step-by-step guides for the most popular distros such as Fedora, Ubuntu, Manjaro, Mint, Arch, Debian, Elementary, to name but a few. <laughs> the, the Linux users have come out in droves to test all the Linuxes on, on the framework because we went, we went to live this modular uh, laptop life, <laughs> that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, I mean, oh, this thing, this thing Linux is 100%. Yeah. And so far, the humans behind Framework, they've done nothing nothing but knock it out of the park there is I'm t- yeah look around for something bad about the team behind framework let me know if you find anything because i didn't now now like this this is why i will champion framework because they've proven they've shown all the big laptop makers that you can make a sleek easily repairable modular mm. good looking laptop Mm-hmm. And it's not going to cost eleventy thousand dollars. Yeah. And I've been told that was completely impossible by Apple, Dell, HP, Lenovo. This cannot be done. Quit asking for it. Now buy our glued together sandwich thing where one thing breaks and throw it away and buy another one from us because hi Apple. It's just I have <laughs> nothing but love for everybody with the framework. Yeah. And doing this with the firmware is kind of brilliant and they're so reasonably priced for what they are. They're, they're not. Yeah. I mean, you can get a decent yeah. one for 12 to 1500 bucks. I know it's a really good price and you can actually go even, even lower and customize it. I think uh, the last time uh, me and you were talking about this, I got mine down to about $800 mm. and then you can just add on your, your little cards. They later even on offer the uh, bare bone kit. If you want to go that way. Yeah. 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 And they've opened up module development for third parties. If you want to get in and make your own thing, like an RGB module, so it'll blink more. I will talk to <laughs> yes. you if you make that. <laughs> still brilliant. Good to see. Good to know. Now, security. Seems kind of topical. Um, messaging mm-hmm. systems Absolutely. before the show. <laughs> if you skipped over and you just right at this point, uh, Discord kind of caught on fire. It seems to be on less fire at this point, a few minutes in. but. You know, maybe you like sending like really secure messages on your mobile devices for whatever reason. You know, how about something that mm-hmm. could work 
like a messaging system that could work locally in the area, even if the internet went down, or something without a central server, which could be a problem like Discord today, and um, you know something that can't really be monitored or attacked very easily. Well, now, yeah, now you can do all that from the comfort of your desktop because Briar Desktop is Woo-hoo. now available for Linux. It comes in Debian packages, which is nice, but for you crazy hackers out there that want to run Java Jar, they got a dot jar. That, yeah, there it is. Yeah. Java jar. <laughs> um, it requires a Java runtime environment. 17, Java so. jar. <laughs> there it is. I will just admit and be guilty or not guilty. I just assume anything I type online at any point, somebody can read. It's just a yeah. level of difficulty between that but i'm unfamiliar with the briar uh, messenger service but they said it's a uh, very reasonably popular with journalists and stuff like that I'm like all mm. right so but i was more fascinated in the ability to operate over bluetooth and wi-fi locally yeah that's very that's it's kind of like a uh, mesh networking with our phones yeah and yeah that that's a nice thing i mean that's that's yeah, very, very good, actually, um, for instance, in third world countries where they don't have access to Internet and that would allow people to talk to each other. See, I was just thinking about yeah. for children organizing against their parents. <laughs> yeah, well, there there is that. Then the parents can't pay attention to what their kids are doing. That makes uh, sense. No. Um, and well, what I really like also is that uh, the Internet communication is actually using the Tor network, mm-hmm. which is very secure and one of my favorite favorite it's, networks it's, it's, on the it's internet. Secure right up to you, like uh, come out of a CIA exit node. Then, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It is available but on Google Play and after all. Cool. Yeah, it is, isn't it? Yeah, I saw that. I saw that. So, I mean, the people behind this—they've worked on things. Uh, I was reading in here then. Like LimeWire, I mean decentralized platforms, mm-hmm. just in general. LimeWire, I remember LimeWire. <laughs> oh, everyone does. That's how we used yeah. to download Linux distributions back in the day, Jill, and only oh, Linux yeah, distributions. They're... Yeah, and only even Linux on Kazan Emil. <laughs> <laughs> it was a different time. It was a different time. Yeah. Ah, uh, so <laughs> we got a little bit. Of a slice pie, but we do want to thank we have a new patron to think this week. If you yeah. want to support us, this is what we do. We don't have ads. Head over to our web zone, linuxgamecast.com. You don't need an ad blocker because I don't put them up there, but I still managed to keep over half a terabyte of audio and video guides podcast available for you ad free. And I'm able to do that with everyone who helps fund everything we do over at patreon.com forward slash linuxgamecast. I throw in some bonus stuff in there. We got an extra show, an extra hour of content in audio and video form each and every week. We got access to the Discord when it's not on fire, but we have a completely free and open IRC that's tied into Discord for live chats as well. And you can also get an invite if you're just looking, because I know we've gained some new patrons this week. They're like, mm-hmm. wait, you guys are the guys and gals are playing Track Mania? <laughs> wait, Woo-hoo. oh, and you're, you're doing it for fun? Oh, yes. <laughs> um, I would like a ticket, yeah. please. And so some people have done that. But. Yeah, who do we have like, this week? Yeah, well, like Obi Wan, he he found us uh, last Friday while we were playing uh, Trackmania, and I he's think been Obi Wan was to have inflicted Beast Vic inflicted that going by. Uh, oh, okay, that <laughs> some may, yeah, of the talk that makes last sense because I definitely okay. heard he's like, "Oh, you got me into this," and I'm like, "Oh, ha, ha, ha. that's right, that's right." One yeah. of us, <laughs> one of us, but so. Obi Wan was uh, in with us yesterday when we were playing, mm-hmm. and um, with Wimpy and, and um, Alan and, and the whole gang, and Foxy. It's uh... so and yes, oh yes, and that's the Martin Wimpress, otherwise known as, as Wimpy, who got Ubuntu Mate twenty one point ten working on the GPD Pocket three. <laughs> so same person. <laughs> you can find him here, um, LGC. <laughs> It's going to be kind of fun. Um, yeah. Thanks, everybody, for letting us do this. And we have a YouTube channel. We have two YouTube channels. I do a horrible. We're horrible at marketing and plugging our own stuff. But we have uh, Linux Gamecast at YouTube. And there's, if you go to the bottom of that, recommended channels, we have the Uncut series, mm-hmm. which is another yeah. thing. 
for patrons, you get the live and uncut series a week early, but I put those out for free because I'm not a huge fan of like big paywalls, but there's other things I will put out for patrons is, uh, like usually a couple of days early look at things, but not in the sense of, uh, I want to make that very clear. Like here, you can see the finished product first. It was like, yo, check this for some mm-hmm. typos and grammatical errors and like stuff for me. It, did I miss anything? So kind of help participate in some feedback. It is brilliant. Yeah. Thank you all for that. We're on the, Keep being awesome. We're on all the podcast things as well. We're Are on, we? Um, yeah, just about. <laughs> we were reading over some of that. Uh, we went down that rabbit hole because somebody was like, I left a review for you on a podcast thing. Like, oh no, how many podcast things? Yeah, are on you? Amazon. Yeah. That was we're, cool. <laughs> we're on Amazon Books, which is fun. Yeah. <laughs> we get enough downloads from Amazon to where we have an Amazon person that contacts me. He's like, hey, how can we work with you? My name is. Dun, dun, dun. I just ignore them. Yeah, it's cool. We do this for fun. <laughs> I run this as just like, hey, come on. We talk about what we want and then we peace out. And I want to keep it like that. I like the energy of that. And I'm, that's how we're going to keep Absolutely. rolling as long as we possibly can. So that is brilliant. Thank you, everyone. Oh, go to our web zone. There's a support button that's got stuff under it that works now on, when you're on mobile. Uh, mm-hmm. Jill's got like wish list. Pedro's got one. Jordan's got one. I got one for the studio. There's PayPal. We got a store. See, look, I told you I'm horrible at this. Um, yeah. That's yeah. It. We have our, our merch store. You can buy LWW t-shirts and swag and Linux Gamecast swag. <laughs> Thank you. <Game> <laughs> I hopefully th- well, Patreon makes things possible. Like doing the live and uncut because that's like, mm. uh, just the audio for that is usually 200 megabytes. They handle the hosting for that for us. So yeah, like it's that so nice. reward for value. Good deals. We've been Patreon with Patreon since early days, like year two, whatever. Cause I knew a guy who knew the guy like was working with Patreon in his apartment room. Where he, apartment, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, he's like, no, this dude's a really guy. He's trying to like get all this stuff set up. And they, they've, they've had some stumbles like any company, but they've held very true to their core. So I got to say good on that. Um, mm-hmm. are, are we done? Yes. <laughs> Shuck and jive. Oh, look at this pie. It's, it's reverse pie. No, man. <laughs> we've got cherry on bottom and crust on top and then we have cherry on top and crust on bottom and we have uh 3.14 going forward and uh 413 backwards <laughs> that contains so much sugar it has scrambled a person's brain to where they tried to spell pie with numbers yes <laughs> it sure did <laughs> mirror universe pie my husband says that's perfect steve oh no <laughs> Well, one thing I love <laughs> is hipsters and hipsters come in all forms uh-huh. and flavors up to and including electronic hipsters. And man, they love Amigas. Can't get enough yes. of <laughs> You say something bad about an Amiga, they'll cut you. You got to watch out. So I'm going to talk about the Pi Amiga. It's a thing. It's mm-hmm. been a thing for a long while. But this is a workbench replacement for the Pi 400. Jill's got one of those. The little keyboard yeah. deal. And I was Absolutely. like, oh, that's kind of brilliant <laughs> if you make one of these just for that, because, you know, it kind of works in the same spirit. It is definitely bring your own ROM, but uh, the sound and joysticks work, all that fun stuff. And this guide, this guide will walk you through it to get it up and running with a quickness so you, too, can experience the bad old days of computing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Then all the hardware snobs can give you, a, well, a hard time because it's not a real Amiga. You should go buy, geez, pay some astronomical price online and get a real Amiga, but look on the bright side. You can at least take your <laughs> Raspberry Pi 400, boot it back into Linux and do something useful with it. Unlike a real Amiga hardware. Yeah. <laughs> Aww. Well, you can have fun playing classic games on, on work workbench desktop or relive the golden days of animating with Lightwave. I used to do that on the Amiga back in the day. Um, and something I want to mention about this also is that you can get the ROMs at Amiga Forever. It's one of my favorite websites. And I believe it's it's just under $30 uh, to, to buy the software. And it comes with the ROMs. And uh, they are available in other places as well. But that's, that's the one that I am familiar with. <laughs> this thing oh, turns it says it's on the Android store as well. Robots hmm, nice. into, they drink too much. No, <laughs> uh, I don't know. I mean, my mom had an Amiga 4K 
growing up and it was like her toy computer. Yeah. She, like, that's oh, fun. I, I, I can't, I don't really see the need to apologize for it. I don't have any nostalgia thing. I'm like, burn it down. Let's get new <laughs> stuff. Like playing with the bad old days of computing. I don't want to relive that. I was there. I've seen it. Uh, I, I love yeah. this modern future we have, but I'm glad that people do find it interesting, do find it fascinating because they go back and they learn things. They learn some core concepts and some basic skills that are just not taught when we have teenagers and 20 year olds running around today that don't understand what a folder Mm -hmm. structure is. Yeah. Or how to code, you know, how to use basic. Or a command line. (laughs) Exactly. Like how do I CD into a directory? (laughs) And you're going to learn skills and they want to learn those skills because they want to do the retro computing thing. And I think that is absolutely brilliant. This is a way you can, you know, kind of get a taste of it. And again, it's in the spirit, you know, because it's all nice and self-contained. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, I keep my uh, Amiga 500 uh, ticking along, so it's happy. (laughs) But I like the fact that I can put this on my Raspberry Pi 400. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, when when you want to take a break, you're like, I'm being too productive in this thing. Let me switch it over. Well, not to mention it's so much faster. (laughs) I mean, you know, (laughs) it's so much faster. (laughs) What I really appreciate when I watch this is uh, like retro, because I follow the... um, Mm, mm, kid that rubs stuff and makes noises. What's his name? Uh, LGR, that one. I, oh, yeah. Lazy Game Reviews, yes. <laughs> and uh, a couple of others. And I, I miss Retro Man Cave. That's another one. Retro Man yes. Cave is another one of my favorites, yeah. Anytime I'm a sucker, you will get me every time when it is. I'm taking this piece of 80s or early 90s, like really early 90s technology and getting it online. I'm like, I'm watching that because I just find that absolutely fascinating. And yeah, uh, get mm-hmm. some use out of your pie. Uh, I that was uh, I was kind of interested in that pie. It's just I wish they had one with more RAM. Yeah, I I know. Yeah, I have the uh, four gig one, mm. and uh, yeah, I would like to get the eight gig one. <laughs> so I do need to do that still. <laughs> I want somebody to do some creative soldering because I've definitely seen people making vampire type. Um, Amiga accelerators with Raspberry Pi. I want somebody to do it with a 400, which is kind of like taped on the side of the Amiga. Oh, Nico Jet. Yeah, you just brought that up. That is what Vista Pro was one of my favorite landscape fly through um, animation programs. Um, it was also available for, for DOS as well, but I used it on the Amiga. And it was cool because you could load, it, load in the DEMs or the demographics from you know, the uh, famous places on Mars or the moon, or of course on the, in, in the U S like the grand Canyon. And that was just awesome. <laughs> so yeah, you absolutely can do that on workbench. <laughs> that's kind of neat. I mean, again, if that's your jam, I wholly support you in it. Um, yeah. You go make some Amiga flavored mm-hmm. pie. There we go. Yeah. Look at that. It's already been 30 minutes. Jill. <sighs> oh, Okay. Guess it's time for us I to go. Know. I know. Yeah, don't worry. I, I, I'm saving us and everyone else from devolving into the oh, back in my day. Because we'll do yeah. that. We're getting to that age. You know, you, you run into elderly are, people definitely. today and they start talking about things, you know, but it's not tech. We're the generation that's going to be doing that. But with tech, it's weird. It's very yeah. weird. You get people started and we would just get into it. And I'm like, oh, the old people are talking about old stuff. It's going to fun. Know. It's going to brilliant. Hey, thanks for showing up and hanging out with us. Uh, we're going to break up a little bit of music and roll some credits. Yay! <laughs> Aw, thank you to all our wonderful patrons. And there was lots of people in chat. Steve, I let Steve, you in. Steve, Beastwick, Nico Jet, <laughs> Art Theron, Katana Steel, Oil of Hope. It's all our wonderful mirror was in there. Yay! All our wonderful people. And of course, Gamatron. And we had a new follower, a Triple I, Mark Triple I. <laughs> I guess that's how you pronounce it. What? <laughs> our, in chat. <laughs> triple I uh, triple underscore I. Mark <laughs> underscore Triple I. And we had uh, Lee 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 Lee. I wonder if that's the same person. I don't know. <laughs> I'm just reading like what Follow it says on, on the Twitch. notifications. I got Badger at Dayton and I got Lily. Oh, um, yeah. In uh, uh, 
uh, Twitch chat. We got triple I. <laughs> it was a little further back. We'll see you next week, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Love you all and Foxy too. <laughs> hey, now, don't. <laughs> don't. Yeah, I'm. <laughs> don't tell folks. <laughs>